Yes, I do understand, Mr. Williams, and we will do our best to, to meet those dates. Goodbye. Yes. Now, as I see it, there's a big future for this kind of product, and the timing's dead right, you see, that's the beauty of it. The whole trend in the industry... Excuse me. Yes, that may be going too far. But why do people hate the telephone so much? After all, the telephone is so much a part of our lives. To begin with, it was let's pretend. We didn't need anyone to reply. All we did was imitate the grown-ups, to the bewilderment of people dialed at random. <laughs> Can you come to my party? We're going to have... Her rabbits are babies. But by the time we'd reached this age, we were using the telephone for conversation. Anyway, Mum says I can have one. And the other bloke, not the secret agent, but the one they thought was a secret agent. Some of us even became addicts. He's ever so funny, but he's sensitive underneath. Oh, you can tell. No. Oh, I forgot to tell you. How much longer? We used the phone for fun, naturally and without difficulty. Because we were talking at leisure to our friends. But in the business world... Yes, I'll see if he gets that, Mr. Jarvis. Bye. Sheila, what happened to the Pritchard and Knight folder? It's not in the file. Oh, I think I've got it somewhere. I'll find it. Suddenly, the telephone no longer seems to be fun. It may even seem to be a threat. An enemy. But if you think about it, this is absurd. After all, a telephone has no life of its own. It's an inanimate object. Cannot move without help and cannot speak for itself. Telephones don't speak to telephones. It has been said, a telephone unites voice and ear. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Phillips. What can I and do? And that's for all it can do. It's my stocks and shares. I've been thinking about them. It I might be very nice if we could see as well. Particularly for this stockbroker. Oh, really? By a &P Shipping. Does that surprise you? But he can't. In fact, most people using the telephone at work have no idea what the person at the other end looks like. Did you have a good holiday? <laughs> yes, yes, we had a marvel. Been conducting a useful relationship with her business friend. But they work miles apart. And they've never seen each other. She has no idea of his appearance. I expect to... You'll be wanting a preliminary And survey. he has no idea about her. Well, if you can manage it, Mr. Smith... She could think of him as a heaven-sent Romeo. I can tell you here now, there won't be any problem about... Or as an absolute beast. Uh, of course, you don't want to exceed the stipulation... On the other hand... I believe we're thinking in very similar terms to uh, that layout at Grove End Estate, but with a higher proportion of three-bedroom detached units... The truth is, of course, that each has a pretty accurate picture of the other as someone courteous and efficient. Professional, if you like. They give this impression because they both allow for the all-important fact that when using the telephone, they can't be seen. Subsidence trouble we had with the long Come in, come in. Hello, George. What happens when we can see the person we're talking to? Firstly, we exchange signals. Some to express courtesy and goodwill. Oh, well. What do you think about this proposition of United Holdings? Well, like Others to make our meaning clear. Oh, yes, yes, I agree with you. Secondly, the other person knows, even when we're not speaking, how we're reacting. But on the telephone, because we can't see each other, neither of these things are so easy. So we have to take extra care to do two things. First, be polite and make sure that we express with voice and voice alone the courtesy we would show someone who was with us in person. And next, be efficient by dealing with calls in an organized way. Otherwise, something thoroughly unsatisfactory is liable to happen. Something like this. Yes? Mr. Bradshaw? Yes, what is it? My name's 
Hobson. George Hobson of Bellingham and Sims. Are you there? Yes, go on. I'm inquiring about some fencing for our premises in North Street. Uh, typical of them, of course, is a town planning problem. I was wondering if you could have... Uh, uh, North Street, you said? Yes. You see, the council's rather hot on amenities in that area. Uh, what's the perimeter? Roughly two and a half thousand feet, but it's a question of the appropriate material. Uh, wait a minute, uh, William. He's less polite, not more, than if the man were calling on him personally. Hello. Mr. Bradshaw? Hello. What's happened? Uh, yes, it seems we can offer a chain link on concrete post to a nominal height of 80. Uh, uh, hold on a minute, will you? Charlie, that idiot Perkins... And now he's neither efficient nor polite. Uh, hold on to him, will you? Uh, hello, Mr. Um... Look, I doubt whether the council will accept concrete posts. Now listen, these concrete posts... No, Mr. Are Bradshaw, fine. you listen to me. I'll tell you what you can do with your concrete posts. Not to put too fine a point on it. If you were the last fencing contractor this side of... Not very successful, was it? Nobody won, everybody lost. Now, let's see what happens when, knowing the other person can't see you, extra care is taken to be both polite and efficient. Bradshaw here. My name's Hobson. George Hobson of Bellingham and Sims. This time he's George. properly organised. And having got his caller's name, he uses it. What can I do for you, Mr Hobson? Oh, we need some help. Mm -hmm. I was talking At this point, the great thing is to listen. He won't be able to do anything for him if he doesn't. And, he me and because the other fellow can't see him, he lets him know that he is still listening. What um, sort of problem exactly, Mr. Hobson? Well, you see, the council's rather hot on amenities in that area. And when he has to look for something, knowing the other person can't see what's happening, he keeps him in the picture. I wonder if you'd like to hold on a moment, Mr. Hobson. I'm quite certain we'll be able to find something for you from our range. I'll just get the catalogue. All right. <coughs> but he doesn't leave him up in the air for long. Sorry, Mr. Hobson, it's taken a little longer than I thought. I've got the catalogue. It's a question of finding the right section. Now he's being courteous about it. And this time, there's no reason for the other man to feel irritated. <coughs> ah, yes, here we are, sir. Now, and when you have to break off a conversation to deal with another matter... Jean! Charlie! Apologise and cover the mouthpiece. Uh, I'm sorry, would you excuse me for just a moment, sir? Charlie, that idiot Perkins is out in the car park. I told him not to leave. Now, will you try and hold him? I'm sorry about that, Mr. Hobson. Oh, that's all right. You see, everything's going smoothly enough. Because he was efficient and polite, he's established a relationship almost as good as if they'd met face to face. Ah, so they can hardly complain if we use it. <laughs> so remember, be polite and be efficient. We've seen some examples of both of these. Now, let's consider some more. Most of them only need a little common sense. For instance, when you receive a call you can't deal with, not this. No, oh no, we couldn't do that. Oh no. Bloody fools here on the switchboard putting a call through here. But this. Oh, sorry, Mr. Smith, that's not this department. Uh, Mr. Thomas deals with it. If you'll just hold on a moment, I'll see if he can speak to you. Or alternatively, this. No, Mr. Smith, I'm sorry, but that's not this department. Uh, I'm not sure who deals with it. But I'll find out and get the right person to ring you back straight away. And why do this? Hello. When this is so easy. Sales office, Miss Carey speaking. And then, although she's certainly trying. Mr. Baker's office. May I have your name, please? Mr. what? Am Smith. Amsbridge. Mr. Ainsworth. Wouldn't this be better? Mr. Baker's office. Yes. May I have your name, please? Mr. I wonder if you'd spell that for me. A-M-S 
W-Y-C-H. Yes, Mr. Amswich. What can I do for you? This certainly won't do. Get down to a warehouse as soon as you come. Why out the hell are people are getting us? Right? Nor this. You all right? I said I don't understand why I can hear you all right. Or this. Robinson here. Oh, good afternoon. I wonder if you could help me. Robinson. This is far from efficient. Get me Smithson and Gibbard, please. When you could do this. 01-629-9530. That's right. Thank you. And when making a call, don't do this. Call Mr. Jens to discuss whether... Um, well, it's, it's about the, um, the dispatch notes. Why not organize your thoughts like this? Mr. Jones, good morning. First of all, dispatch notes. Now, I know we sent them to you. Have you, in fact, returned them? And when you have to leave your office? <coughs> be organized for telephone calls like this. Hello, Joe. Oh, look, I'll be at a meeting in another office for the next half hour. I've asked the switchboard to put my calls through to you. Is that OK? And finally, when faced with the classic enemy of efficiency, the cutoff. Hello. Hello. Oh, for heaven's sake. Hello, hello, operator. Hello. Hello. Oh, no. No. that, but this. Make it a rule. It's the original caller who should make the call again. Wilkinson here. Ah, oh, old man, I'm afraid we were cut off. Now, where are we? Ah, yes, Thursday would be fine for me. Good. So, we've seen how the telephone can be used as a replacement for face-to-face -face communication. Oh, yes. Can I help you? Yes, Mr. Amswich. What can I do for you? My name's John Smith of Hunterton's. Based on these two simple rules. Be polite and be efficient. Business relies on communication. And one way in which people communicate is by telephone. There are two others. Face to face and through memos, letters or telex. But before deciding which is the most appropriate, think. Don't automatically choose the easiest. Make a conscious decision as to which is the best in the given circumstances. When it's a choice between writing a letter and using the telephone, remember the telephone is fast, immediate and efficient. And that often it can actually cost less than a letter. There it is then, the telephone. Merely an instrument, waiting to be used, by you, politely and efficiently, with friendliness and with common sense. Mm -hmm.